my stand from the Second Amendment, or the rights of the free people of the United States of America.
I'm sorry. I I seen some news articles that said that some of the students were going to show up today. I wish they did. Taylor Fullen, a good friend of mine, called out David Hogg. I wish he did show up. I wish he did show up. He's an 18 year old. He's an adult. I wish he did show up. He's an adult. Well, he's an, he's an adult. He's an adult. I wish he did show up. The Democrats are using these students as political pawns because no elected official can have a rebuttal against these kids. Call it what it is, child abuse. Well, no, no, no politician can have a rebuttal against the kids. Yes, they've been through a tragedy. Yes, they've been through a, a, a shooting tragedy. Yes, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. I'm 41 years old. Okay? David Hogg been through a, a shooting, sh a, a, a tragedy. You know what? Fuck David Hogg. You know what? I lost many a friends. I've seen many a shootings. I've been shot at many a times. Okay, David Hogg still lives with his mom and dad. David Hogg wakes up every day and his biggest, biggest decision in life is whether I want to eat Cocoa Krispies or fucking Cocoa Crisp, you know, fucking Crisp Pebbles. Okay? Fucking three weeks ago, these kids were fucking eating Tide Pods and now they're constitutional experts on my constitutional rights, on my fucking gun rights. Okay? Listen. If they spent more time teaching the Constitution in school, the kids would have a better education. I'm telling people not to come to Florida for spring break. Fuck that. I said we take our AR 15s and go out and have a hard fucking. Uh, we, we, we go out and have a hard hunt. We have a, a fucking hog roast in, the, in David Hogg's name. Invite all of the spring breakers down, have a hog roast in, in honor of David Hogg. Invite all the spring breakers down. Screw that. I don't see CNN down here today. Yeah! I'm sorry. I'm not politically correct. It's all right. It shouldn't be. There is no correctness in, in politics. They don't care. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, First Amendment, that's right. We're not going to let them infringe on our rights. Political correctness is the step of the We're not going to let them infringe on our rights. SB 726. Them saying that they are going to define assault weapons. I don't know if you guys look at what they define as an assault weapon. Everything that they define as an assault weapon pretty much is anything that's a semi automatic weapon. So pretty much you guys will be left with muzzle loaders and revolvers. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We the people of Florida, we the voters, we coming out here today prove that we can vote these Democrats out of office. We the people of Florida coming out today prove that we will not have our rights infringed upon. We the people of Florida prove that the Democrats will not politicize this tragedy, will not politicize these children, and they will not take away our Second Amendment rights. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I got some sandwiches here. John. I, I, I've been arguing this over and over again. This is a little bit of a pick. We even we we let this young man come out here today. We seen him today. Anyway, so. uh, I'm still, I got a whole bunch of them. Still. We knew who he was. We let him stand up here today. We knew who he was. We let him stand out here. We let him come up here. We let him have to say what he had to say. And you see what he did. He came up here, he talked shit, and he fucking ran. That's what they do. That's what they do. They talk shit and they run. But last week, 
You know, last week, these organizations, you know, that's the difference between Waters. the Democrats. And I'm not going to say Republicans. I don't consider myself a Republican. That's I'm it. I'm a constitutional Republican. Um, we are not funded. We all came out here today pro bono. We came out here on a Sunday. We came out here today to defend our Water. Second Amendment right. We came all out here on our own to defend our Second Amendment right, to stand up for our rights. You know what I mean? We weren't backed by anybody. Do you think that the news media is going to pick up on that? Do you think they're going to, you know, the news media was out here today. They were waiting for somebody, that, you know, they were waiting for that juicy story for uh, somebody to pull out their CCW. They were, they were waiting for uh, a competition. They were waiting for Antifa to show up. They were trying to get some all right fucking story. And we didn't give it to them today. We didn't give it to them. Because we are better than that. But I, I just want to thank everybody for coming out today. You want one? You know, uh, and, you know, with this two, 2018 midterms, we need more of this. We need more people coming out. Um, the attack on the NRA. This political, this politi I mean. What's that? No. We need people who sit behind the keyboard and send memes and send, you know, little, you know, well, I know we all do it, we all do it. We all sit behind the keyboard on Facebook and, you know, I just got banned from Facebook and now I'm out of jail. I get it. I get it. We all do it. But we need more people. And I, I'll be the first one to admit it. And I got in a lot of trouble with the Republicans. And I tell them straight up, I don't go to country clubs. I don't wear a vest, khaki pants, and loafers. I'm not that guy. I don't show up to those country club meetings. I'm not that person. I'm an activist. They consider me a provocateur. When Indivisible holds a meeting, I show up to their meetings. When these other uh, left-wing organizations hold uh, some kind of meeting, I was out here last year when Indivisible tried to attack the Electoral College to convince them not to vote for Donald Trump. I was across the street playing fucking babies crying on a big loudspeaker because that's all I thought that these fucking people were talking about. Just crying. We need more people to come out. We need more activism in the Republican Party. If you don't even have to be a Republican, to be a, a Trumpican. We need more people to come out and be activists. We need more people to come out. Support your Second Amendment. Support this American flag. Support your country. If not, we're going to lose. In 2018, you're going to lose this House, you're going to lose this Senate. <laughs> You're going to lose. This liberal progressive movement is going to take control of Florida, of this country. It's the people. So, the people that want to sit behind the computer and send memes, argue with people on Facebook, that's great. That's good. I'd like to see more people come out. The three percenters, I got a lot of respect for those guys. I got a lot of respect for those guys. Antifa, we didn't see no, we seen one guy. One guy. There's not a lot of Antifa out here in Tallahassee. I was in Gainesville. We didn't see a lot of opposition, but this was put together in a week and a half. They didn't have the time to put together any opposition. We didn't expect yeah. any opposition today. That's good, though. So, uh, I didn't expect it. We had one guy. One guy showed up and said what he had to say and he fucking high tailed and fucking ran. He must be from Coward County. I want to thank everybody for coming out here. I want to thank the organizers that put this event together. I want to thank everybody that, that, that stayed out here 
you know, this was a four hour, five hour event. You know, people drove. I know people that came from Illinois. I know people that came from Southern. I, I came from South Florida. I know people that came from all over to come out here today. And hopefully the media took notice. Hopefully, you know, tomorrow when, when we read the paper, and hopefully, you know, they take notice that the people, the Florida voters, the gun advocates, the, the Second Amendment rights supporters, you know, they took notice. And our senators, our representatives will take notice. And when they vote on SB 726, that our voices will be heard tomorrow. That's all I got. I just want to thank everyone for coming out here today. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. I haven't got my charger fixed yet, so I was like, I, I, I left my phone in the car because I know it was going crazy. I don't know a single person, a single male person. All right, brother, be good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Not everyone turns out to be like Bundy. There's a heartbreaking correlation between pornography and raping and murder. It won't be a perfect solution, but at the very least, we can see start in this war on our children. Bundy, like Cruz, had a poor father figure in his life. Most shooters are males. Simple facts. Young boys need a father figure to discipline them and show them true right and true wrong. Children can recognize, you know, I'm not supposed to lie. But when they see pornographic images, the sex scandals coming out of Hollywood, the violence, the drugs, and the alcohol on their newest Xbox game, it's sad to say, but they're too foolish to know what's, what's actually right. Now, Cruz and Bundy both have four father figures in their lives. Cruz had a gun. Ted Bundy used bat, his hand, at all to kill potentially 100 people. It's not a gun issue, it's an issue of the heart. Now, if we do something to change the hearts of our children, we will continue to pay the steep price. Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas killer, was found to have countless images of child pornography on his laptop and many other disturbing images and searches on his computer. His brother, likewise, was arrested shortly thereafter on similar charges. And what was the father in all of this? He was a bank robber. This ties it all back together. A poor father figure, race pornography, and other forms of violence. And in some cases, like Bundy, Paddock, and Cruz, it leads to mass murder, whether by gun or any other form of weapon. It's moral degeneracy and a lack of parenting is not a gun issue. So parents, I exhort you. Get involved in your children's lives and actually find out what they're doing. If your child happens to be living an upright life, that's wonderful. But if they are not, which is highly more likely, knowing many children myself, you know, and you do nothing, may God have mercy. Parents, if you see another young child who's motherless or fatherless like Cruz, do what you can to get involved in their life. And it's only through this, and by becoming a parent to them, that we can begin to curb these mass murders. More gun regulations will not have the desired effect. If someone wants to sin, they will find a way to sin. Now, thank you. I'm a writer under the pen name of Angry American. Um, a lot of people ask where the name came from. Well, honestly, it was a username on a forum. Uh, that's where I started writing. But it was pretty um, proper the way I felt at the time and still feel. And that's why I still use the name. Um, one thing I want to do real quick, though, because I haven't heard it done yet today, is let's give a round of applause for the Capitol Police, Tallahassee PD. The it's important that our law enforcement friends know that we got their back just like they have ours. And that's the one of the things I want to talk about today. The left is saying that firearms, any firearm now at this point, 
has no place in our civil society today. They say that only the military and first responders need to possess firearms. Well, when you are being attacked or victimized in any fashion, who is the real first responder? We are. You are. You are the first responder. When you break it down first, coming before all others with respect to time, um, order of appearance, that kind of thing. Responder is someone who responds to something. So you are your own first responder. Therefore, we need to be armed just like we are now, just as we have been for 200 years, and it needs to continue into the future. Yeah. Nothing against law enforcement. They cannot be everywhere. There's simply not enough of them, and they've got enough other stuff going on. When you look at the list of departments that are inside your typical law enforcement agency, they have a full plate, and we have to do our part. You know, the media doesn't like to cover when civilians come to the aid of law enforcement officers. It happens all the time. They like to decry the officers Good. in Broward County who didn't enter the school. I don't know exactly what happened there yet. We're still learning the details. If they're told to stand down, that's a horrible crime. It needs to be addressed with your sheriff and not the deputies at hand, in my opinion. That's it. And then you got a sheriff that won't even own the responsibility. That's shameful. Yeah. He no. He needs to be thrown in jail for violating his oath of office by not being responsible. Election of duty. But we want to make sure that law enforcement understands because the left does not support law enforcement. They don't respect law enforcement. We do respect law enforcement. Ninety percent of law enforcement officers come from our ranks. So does the military. We're the source of those people because we are those people. I just want to make that distinction. There's a lot of folks mad, justifiably, about the deputies down in Broward. I'm not paying them all with broad drugs. Not all of them are. But the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution does not grant us anything. There you go. It affirms our God given right to defend ourselves with our firearms. Natural rights for the land. So when the left starts talking about these things have no place in our modern civil society. Let's remind them of who the true first responders are. And that's why the left doesn't like that, because they are not interested in personal responsibility. And that's what it comes down to. They want somebody else to fix their problems, no matter what their problem is. And the thought, the thought of defending themselves is an anathema to people. Whereas us, it's common sense. But they also lack that. I want to keep it short. That's all I wanted to mention. When your, your lefty friends start complaining about it, just remember that the first responder, who the real first responder is. And if you sit down and think about that for a minute, it's actually pretty impactful to people. It's worked for me already on a couple. Now, who's there when a crime is committed? It's the people being victimized. They're the ones that are the first responder. So thanks for coming out, everybody. And again, I want to thank you for coming out. Everybody know we've got a, one of the members uh, representing the Florida Libertarian Party. Here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Joshua Folsom, and I am the Region 3 representative for the Libertarian Party of Florida. That covers Gaston, Leon, Wakala, Madison, Taylor, and Jefferson County. Unfortunately, I have another list for you today, which covers every single turncoat that got this bill out of committee and got us on the Capitol steps today. Vote him out! We are tired of being the scapegoats for every time evil rears its head in the United States of America and these people are going to hear it. So without further ado, in the rules committee, the following senators voted yay. Senator Elizabeth Benacuiso, Republican, District 27, covering Lee County. Senator Rob Bradley, Republican, District 5, Levy, Dixie, Dixie, Gilchrist, Lafayette, Swanee, Columbia, Baker, Union, Bradford, and Clay. Senator Jeff Brand, Republican, District 24.
Pinellas County. Senator Anita Flores, District 39, Republican, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Miami Dade and Monroe County. Senator Bill Galvano, Republican, District 21, Hillsborough and Manatee County. Senator Keith Perry, Republican, District 8, Alachua, Putnam and Marion County. Senator Wilton Simpson, Republican, District 10, Citrus, Hernando and Pasco County. Senator Lauren Buck, Democrat, District 32, Broward. Senator Bill Munsford, Democrat, District 3, Calhoun, Gulf, Liberty, Franklin, Gadsden, Leon, Wakulla, Jefferson, Madison, Taylor, and Hamilton County. The following members of the Rules Committee voted nay. Senator Tom Lee, Republican, District 20, Pasco, Hillsborough, and Pope. Now this is where things get weird. Senator Oscar Brayman II, Democrat, District 35, Broward, Miami-Dade. Senator Jose Javier Rodriguez, District 37, Democrat, Miami-Dade. Senator Perry E. Thurston, Jr., Democrat, District 33, Broward. In the Appropriations Committee, the following voted yay. Senator Kelly Stargo, Republican District 22, Lake and Polk. Senator Wilton Simpson, Republican District 10, Citrus, Hernando and Pasco. Senator David Simmons, Republican District 9, Similo, Seminole and Volusia County. Senator Kathleen Pasadimo, Republican, District 28, Collier, Hendry and Lee. Senator Bill Galvano, Republican, District 21, Mincy and Hillsborough County. Senator George B. Gaynor, Republican, District 2, Bay, Holmes, Jackson, Walton, Washington, and Okaloosa. Senator Anita Flores, Republican District 39, Monroe, Miami Dade. Senator Jeff Franz, Republican District 24, Pinellas. The chair of the Appropriations Committee, Senator Rod Bradley, R, Republican District 5, Baker, Bradford, Clay, Columbia, Dixie, Gilchrist, Lafayette, Levy, Swanee, Union, and Marion. Senator Elizabeth Benacristo, Republican District 27, Lee. Senator Aaron Bean, Republican District 4, Nassau and Duval County. Senator Bill Munford, Democrat District 3, Calhoun, Gulf, Liberty, Franklin, Gaston, Leon, Wakala, Jefferson, Madison, Taylor, and Hamilton County. The following in appropriations voted nay. Senator Denise Grimsley, Republican, District 26, Manatee and Hillsboro. Yeah. Senator Dennis Baxley, Republican, District 12, Lake and Marion. Yeah. Senator Linda Stewart, Democrat, District 13, Orange. Yeah. She's not a good guy. Though. Senator Bobby Powell, District 30, Democrat, Paul Beach. Senator Audrey Gibson, Democrat, District 6, Duval. Oscar Brainian, or Brain in the second. Democrat, District 35, Broward, Miami. Senator Randolph Bracey, Democrat, District 11, Orange. Senator Lawrence Bush, Democrat, District 32, Broward. Do you guys notice something about those nay lists? They're Democrats. They're mostly Democrats. They would not let this bill out of committee. They voted that the bill would not leave committee, although they were defeated because the bill didn't go far enough, it didn't align with their principles enough. Every Republican that voted yay is more of a coward than those Democrats. That is all I have for you today. I have a few copies of this list. I don't have enough for all of you, but if you really want one, need one, come get it. Right down there. There you go. Thank you.
Did he take all the copies you had? No. You got one? Thank you, brother. I got a website. Y'all can hand those out. I got to get those I, out here. Streaming, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. Outside voice. My name is Chris Rose. I am from Gainesville, Alachua County, Florida. And I'm an officer of the Libertarian Party of Saints. And this bill, Senate Bill 7026, infuriates me. This bill, throughout its 73, 75 plus pages and growing more every day, indirectly or directly infringes on the first, second, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth amendments to our Constitution, otherwise known as the Bill of Rights. What do these people think they're doing? They're not thinking. I was right yonder around the corner on the massive steps with a beautiful fountain paid for by me and you. And I stood there with a colleague of mine and I watched over 1,100 people converge on our senators' offices. These people were mostly made up of poor, misguided, misunderstanding, but very passionate students. I say misguided because the calls and the concerns that they were making were purely emotional based. They were taught to, to go against the NRA and before the shooting. Sympathize and empathize with their concerns. It is our responsibility to teach them and everyone else who is for this bill that the way to protect American citizens is not by to infringe on the rights and the privileges that we as Americans have fought and died and struggled for for generations. Yeah. 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 in the crowd right now are parents. Yeah. How many have children? Yeah. And I have a daughter. She's four and a half. What kind of world am I leaving for her? Amen. What are we being, what are we allowing to have our children taught? The angry mob which was unruly, violent, and very loud on Monday kept screaming this is what democracy looks like and this they were exactly right. Looks like we are not a democracy, We're a republic. Ladies, gentlemen. Republic. We are a constitutional republic. And we are failing our children as parents as a whole to teach them the difference and the reason why. It is my plea to all of us this evening or whenever the next time is that we hold our posterity closely to our breast, and in the same breath that we tell them that we love them, to acknowledge that we will not let this constitutional republic die in their lifetimes. We will not let the socialist Marxist agenda of the left dictate to our children how our government works. Monday afternoon, and this past Thursday, after hours of sitting through committee and watching these elected officials, duly elected by the people of the great state of Florida, run rampant on our rights and tell me to my face that, well, it's what we have to do to stay elected. That is not why they were put in office to stay elected. The Constitution is not a chip card to bribe with to further the careers of our elected officials. That is not why, they, why we sent them here. For too long, our politicians elected into office have run roughshod 
over our Constitution, over our morals, over our rights. They have been allowed to sit here in Tallahassee, far removed from the majority of the population of the state, and pretty much dictate what they will do as they please. I say enough! I say that from henceforth we pledge to ourselves and to our posterity that we will not let these crimes that they commit against the Constitution and our inalienable rights go unnoticed. They will not go unheeded. No more! On Monday, I say no more for a different reason. No less noble, but in the proper channels. No more shall an elected official of any party sit up here in the state capitol and decide that for their own personal pleasure and their own personal gain to further their career, they shall pass this bill. In one senator's office, I asked him to his face, why is Governor Scott, a man who campaigned on the Second Amendment and open carry, why is Governor Scott pushing this bill through? The senator paused and he replied. And he said, Senate, he said, Governor Scott is running for U.S. Senate this year. He's running against Bill Nelson. He has $125 million right now set aside for his upcoming race. That's a lot of money, ladies and gentlemen, and that's more money than he had to challenge him. And he said, Governor Scott knows that no Republican will primary him. He will be the only name on your ballot with the Republican letter next to him. So he needs to go hard to the left because all that's left to stand in his way between him and his personal career and a pay raise is the Democrat. And he's going hard to the left our Constitution be what it may, because he wants that pay raise. Just not right. I say to Governor Scott and the rest of these senators, these career politicians who were elected to defend with integrity the Constitution of these United States and the great state of Florida against all enemies, foreign and domestic, I say to you, on this Sunday, on the steps of your state capitol, no more! No more! No more. Message to our politicians, don't tread on me! Yeah. How are we doing this afternoon? Yeah. Our next speaker, we have um, Representative Jay Banks here. Woo. Yeah. He's going to talk to us a little bit and uh, hear from one of our current sitting representatives. County. Give me a shout. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you have come here today with a great concern about the path of our elected officials and our culture in general. It could be that your heart is heavy. It could be that you're afraid 
of the future of our country based on what we're seeing on television and in the media. As we stand here in front of these Capitol buildings, there can be a sense of awe and fear over what they stand for. All because of the power and fear for how they use that power. You and I, however, have a different belief. Because we know in our hearts, in our minds, that no matter how liberal the media gets, no matter how uncooperative our politicians get, they still don't have this, the United States Constitution. I bet some of you have a copy of this in your pocket today. It looks like paper, but it is far stronger than anything that happens in the walls of these chambers. We have a threat upon us in the Capitol this week. And I have a call to action for all of you. The Senate will pass a school safety bill, which includes a gun ban for adults between the ages of 18 and 21. It is unconstitutional on its face. It is unacceptable in our eyes, in the eyes of the highest law of the land, the Bill of Rights. Amen. Amen. I'm asking you to track this legislation on Monday. If it indeed comes to the House of Representatives, I want all of you to contact your House member and say, we can't have it, enough is enough, vote no on the anti-gun bill. Yeah. How about we just stay here and show up in the morning? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like the attitude that you have right now because I believe it's going to take real people who have real lives and real jobs to let our representatives know that the left doesn't run the show. Yeah. 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 They work for us. They do work for us, sir. We will stand steadfast constitutional conservatives, but we need your help. Who am I? I'm Representative Jay Fant from Jacksonville, and I'm running to be your Attorney General when the Cabinet rolls over. And when I am Attorney General, anyone, any government entity, any individual who seeks to take away your constitutional rights will have to go through me first. Thank you. Our founders knew better. They knew we would construct monuments to government. They knew that corruption would occur with people when power goes to their heads. But our founders were wise enough to know that they should draw a line and say to the government, you may not, you may not infringe on my freedom to speak. You may not infringe on my ability to believe what I want to believe. And you may, you may not infringe on my ability to bear arms. Yeah. Yeah. That line be crossed, it is up to us. Again, as imposing as these buildings are, they do not have the strength of the Constitution. I ask you now, and I share with you this day, that there is no one who cares more with four children at home about school safety than I do. But to kick law-abiding citizens in the teeth of their constitutional rights has no business in laws in this state. So we're the only ones with guns are criminals, terrorists, and the government. Yeah. 
And I'm going to close with this thought. When you get home tonight or tomorrow, someday, either then or later, you're going to be asked by your husband or your wife, your children, maybe your grandchildren, pop, mom, did you ever stand for anything? Yeah. And you're going to say, let me tell you something. Here is what I stand for. I stand for, and repeat after me, God and country. God and country. I stand for family and freedom. Family and freedom. The Constitution. The Constitution. America. America. USA. 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 Folks, uh, phone's overheating. You gotta turn it off for a bit. We'll get back with you.